Hello guys, Calmir here once again. And so today we are uh, going to work on my Let's Play world. It was brought to my attention that I've been doing a lot of redstone tutorials in my uh, test world. And so today we're gonna actually going to work on the regular world. Uh, I do want to mention though, um, a lot of what's left that would be of interest until 1.8 comes out is going to require redstone. Um, you know, a lot of unique um, redstone contraptions. For example, uh, hopefully soon I'm going to work on a minecart uh, railroad station. And so that's going to require some redstone, uh, but it'll be implemented into my world as opposed to being shown on a test world. Um, so hopefully that'll be okay. Um, in the meantime, I thought I'd work on something a little bit easier. We're going to work on a swimming pool. Um, and I've actually got kind of a unique little tip for how to do this uh, that I'm actually surprised a lot of people aren't aware of. Um, so it makes it really easy and then I'm also going to go ahead and show a couple cool little things about fountains uh, making water fountains so uh, let me go ahead and do this first I've marked out where I wanted my pool to be now if you're not doing a pool you obviously don't need walls but since I'm making a pool or if you were making a moat you'd want to put your walls in first so let me do that real fast and I'll be right back Okay guys, uh, so I've got my border built out and I'm going to make an infinite water source here. And before I continue, I do want to mention, um, I do have single player commands and my infinite items. Now uh, normally I'm not going to use these, um, but I think I'm going to leave them on kind of permanently now. Uh, for kelp, my kelp world I will be building all of this legit, legitimately, um, continue to do so. Um, but for this episode especially, and perhaps a couple future episodes, I'm going to be using a couple of the single player commands that are going to help um, help you guys see what I'm building. Uh, so they're not necessarily to cheat, but just to help uh, you guys actually see what's going on. Um, I'll show you that uh, once I start putting the water in. Uh, so from here what we're going to do is we're going to pick a corner and we're going to go, I'm going to go three down because that's how deep I want my pole, that's also how deep I made my walls and um, from basically from down here I'm gonna put my water in so I'm gonna put one in the bottom one in the middle and one at the top okay so now I have three water sources so I have no dead zone or I'm sorry no uh, downward drafts inside those water areas and make sure I refill my buckets and from here I'm gonna go ahead and go over two spaces and do the same thing so I brought three water buckets because I'm going three down, but this actually works as far down as you want it to go. If you wanted to go five down or six down, that would still work. And you're going to do this on two borders from your corner. You're going to go across this way, so I'm going to go there, and then I'm going to go that way and continue to the other corner. So I'm going to speed through this. I'll be right back. Okay guys, once you have uh, your water set there, and as you can see at this end I just kind of went cat a corner for the last spot, it will still work that way. Um, but once you've done this, what you're going to do is you're going to create infinite water sources using each one of these areas. When this water block and this water block meet in the middle, as long as there's a block underneath, so this, the block underneath this grass is still there, so it creates an infinite water source right here. Um, and then now that this source is formed I can dig down one more and there's another water source and so this is where I'm going to use single player commands uh, clear water and light 
Okay, so now you can see when I'm underwater. And so this water source is a full water source, this water source is a full water source, and when I remove this one, it creates another water source. So now I have no downward drafts. It's all solid water blocks. Okay, now you don't want to dig down too fast. I'll dig down here uh, quickly here just to show you what happens. Um, but if you dig this, like if you dig this one and immediately dig out the second block, then this top block didn't have time for the two water sources to form another water source here. So you don't want to dig down quickly. I'll just show you real quick because now I have a downward draft, and as you can see, my water is pulling towards the water, the downward water draft. So if that does happen, to fix it, just put your dirt back and dig a little bit slower. There's one, two, three. Okay, and one more. One, two, three. Just take your time. Now that only goes for when you're digging straight down. If you're digging sideways, um, so, well, first of all, whenever you do this, make sure you go back to the corner that has your adjacent uh, water blocks. Because since if you start digging over here because there's no water block nearby, it's not going to create a water source. So you're going to go back over here where you do have the water, right? And so that creates that one. And if you're going sideways, you can go as quick as you want, as quick as you can dig because this ground stays here, it gives it plenty of time to create your um, water sources as you're moving through it. Now also, once you've dug out this first level, you can look down and you can actually dig out the level that you were just working on and go ahead and put your, like in my case, pull floor or like I said, if you're working on a moat or something like that And I usually find it's easier if you go back one. So I'm going to go back here and dig out this area. So now that I've dug out that area, now I'm going to work on the area I was just standing on. And again, you can go sideways as fast as you want. You just can't go down quickly. So I'm going to pause there and then go back the other way. And then pause and then dig out the last layer. And now I can go ahead and put my sandstone in as my floor and I'm going to jump around a little bit make sure there's no areas that's kind of hard for me to swim up swim up all right um it looks like it's turning night uh, so I'm going to go sleep real quick and then I will finish up the pull um, I don't think mobs can actually spawn when I'm using the light command um, but I'm going to go ahead and leave it on and sleep anyway just because um, that way, one, it's day, and two, uh, you guys can see what I'm doing as I'm building this. Uh, but I'm going to fast forward through the rest of building the swimming pool, and I will be right back.
Okay guys, I'm back and as you can see my pull is completed. I had to restart, um, get regather some stuff. My fraps kind of slowed my system down. Um, but uh, as you can see, as I mentioned, I've got a full pool here and I'm going to go ahead and build a diving board just for the heck of it. Jump in. As you can see, I've got no downward drafts. I can swim up easily anywhere. And it does take a while to dig out, but as you can see, it's very easy to uh, do once you have everything in place. And again, I'm kind of surprised that a lot of people don't know about that little trick. A lot of people try, you know, building it one layer at a time and dig underwater, and it's really frustrating. And this way is so much easier, so much quicker. Um, another thing I've had people request uh, was to actually see me build that fountain over there. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that and show you... Ooh ouch a couple uh, cool things about lava and the way it interacts with water so you can make your own uh, interesting fountains so uh, I will be right back okay guys I tore down my fountain and I'm going to show you how I build it real quick um, first you're going to want to pick the spot you want to be the center of your uh, fountain and you're going to put half stones around it like that and then you're going to go up six, two, three, four, five, six, and you're going to put half slabs up here as well. And these uh, rings of half slabs are what's going to control your lava so that it doesn't go out of control. And I know you can dig a hole in the ground, but I think it just looks better with the half slabs on the ground as well. And so from this point, you can go ahead and add your lava because it'll the top ring will keep it from spreading out when it falls and then the bottom will um, keep it from spreading across the ground and what is it with sheep in my world I tell you what okay so now that we have um, the lava in place you can uh, add half slabs to the bottom of another set of half slabs and it'll actually go down like that so instead of being stacked or whatever it'll actually go to the next layer and you can only do this, you put the top one and then build down. If you try and put the bottom one and then you put one above it, it's going to stack it. So it doesn't work that way. And do another ring. Um, you're also going to want to put glass on top of the bottom uh, half slabs. This will prevent you know idiots from accidentally running into the fire and yelling at you or whatever. Um, then you're going to want to build uh, put holes and what I do is in a corner I come one out diagonally and then I go there and there so I have a line of three going diagonally and so that way when you put the water uh, on the bottom set of half slabs in that corner it'll go across and you can probably uh, go further uh, in fact, I know you can go further if you don't want it to just go out one spot like I have it like that. You can have it go out further for different designs because water will um, go up to five blocks. The sixth block has to be a hole. Um, I just don't prefer it that far. Like I could put it right here and it should still work. Um, that connected over there, but to me, like if you're looking at it from this angle, it it comes out too far to me. So I prefer it uh, I'm gonna have to block that off. There we go. Um, so yeah, I prefer it just to be one spot out. Uh, still keeps it kind of narrow without it, you know, overflowing too far and last bucket of water so there you go that's how you built that fountain um, now another cool property of lava um, let's see I'm gonna have to build a ring oh hi squid so we'll go here And that should be high enough, actually. So um, this is just for demonstration. Um, obviously, you would want to use half slabs or something like that. 
That's something that looks better. But if you have an open body of still water like this, um, you can actually put the lava in like that. Okay, um, and what happens is it doesn't form uh, cobblestone unless it re it's on the on a surface like this. So from afar, or if you build the bottom of your fountain, you can see basically you have water, uh, lava that's just flowing down into um, the water, and it doesn't fo form cobblestone at eye level. Um, you can also do this rather than having it form cobblestone. You can actually dig a hole. Uh, let me regather that. Uh, I can't believe I just did that. Um, there we go. I picked up the water instead of the lava. Alright, so instead of having it form, oh, let me swim up, cobblestone like that, you can actually just dig a hole in the ground like that. So now when you put the lava, it'll flow into that hole. And since there's no water around the ground that the lava's in, it doesn't form any cobblestone. All right, so there you go. Um, you can use that to make some uh, fancy lava combination water fountains. And I'm going to run back since it's actually night and I'm cheating more than I should. Um, so anyway, uh, if you found this uh, video interesting or learned something new, please definitely give my video a thumbs up and subscribe. And I will see you next time.